Hi everyone, it's Robin back again with another Christmas card idea tutorial for you. This would be number two. And today I'm going to share with you how to make this card. It's very uh, non-dimensional or low profile, and so it would be perfect for mailing. And it's very easy to create, a little messy, but it's very, very simple, and yet it looks like you have done a lot of fussing, and it's really, really sparkly. And so uh, let me go ahead and share with you how um, to make this card. Uh, basically what you need is a line art stamp and I'm using this one it's a poinsettia just because I've used it before with uh, like I would gold emboss it and then use my reinkers to kind of paint in it uh, to give it a watercolor effect and so this was the first one I thought of when I um, decided to do this card for you guys so basically what you'll need is a piece of transparency okay, and then this is what I mean uh, these are a little pricey once you first buy the package. If you, like I got this at Staples several years ago, probably seven years ago, six, seven years ago. And it comes in a hundred sheets and so it does last forever. Uh, but it, I think it was $10, maybe a little bit more. And probably by now, since everything's gone up, it could be a little bit more. But like I said, it will last you for so many projects. And not just for this project, but for a lot of different um a lot of different projects that you can find to create with uh, transparency. So I cut a piece that would match uh, the size of my uh, stamping block. Sorry about the glare. Um, and then you'll need some stays on ink. I'm using black because it will work well with the stamp that I showed you. And so you just want to ink up your stamp. And you want to use stays on because it's the only thing that will stay on this. Um, if, anytime you stamp on transparencies, you want to use, um, this isn't dye-based ink, it's actually solvent-based ink. So it works out really, really well for um, transparencies. Okay, now that I'm him hawing like crazy, and sorry again about the glare, you guys, but you'll just want to stamp on here. Try not to let it slide because it's kind of slippery. Just want to go straight down and just give it a press. Oh. And, okay, so I haven't slid it at all. I'm going to pick it straight up, and it's probably going to stick, and I'm off screen. Sorry about that. Okay, it didn't stick good. All right, so there's the stamp, and here it is stamped on the transparency. It's really, uh, you want to set this aside for probably about a minute to let the solvent ink dry on there so it won't smear. So I'm going to set that over here. Well, actually, I'm going to set it off screen just to avoid the glare for you guys. And we're going to get started working on our card base. Um, this is an, we're just going to recreate the same card. It's an A2 size card. And so you'll need to start off with a piece of uh, cardstock measuring 8.5 inches by 5.5 inches. And then you're going to score it at 4 and 1 fourth or 4 and a quarter. And I'll just get my bone folded. Okay, and then uh, you're going to need another layer of cardstock, the same color as your one of your reinkers, because we're going to um, basically the same color you're using in here. These are just reinkers with glossy accents and I'll, and some glitter. So the same color to match whatever color you're using in reinker, and uh, this just is one eighth inch smaller than my base, so four and one eighth inches by five and three eighths inches. And I'll go ahead and adhere that to the front of the card. You're just going to have a really thin uh, layer or frame around it. Um, but you know, you could do it. I'm only doing this size because I use an embossing folder that won't, um, that I can't really cut much more off of. So this just has an eighth inch border. And then this is the embossing folder that I used. This one is a tulip one from Stampin' Up. I just wanted something with a frame, and this was the only one that I had. And so that measures four inches by five and one fourth inches. And I've already stamped the greeting on here. And I used a stamp from Walting Mouse Stamp called Compliments of the Season. And I used the Seasons greeting right here. And I used that in the same color ink as this layer here, as well as the reinker. So let me just go ahead and adhere that down. Sorry, I'm off screen. It's no fun to watch when you can't see, right? So I'm just adding some tape. I don't know where to put my ATG gun when I'm not using it. Okay, let me make sure I have this 
open at the bottom. All right, I do. And then again, a 1 8 inch border on here just uh, because of the um, embossing folder that I used. So it just didn't give me a lot of room to, because it has this outside frame. So I think that looks nice. All right, so I think this has dried now. Um, so let me move this, go ahead and move this off screen until we need it. Basically, what you're going to need is something to put your reinker and glossy accents in. I'm just using a small paint pot, and I've uh, covered it with saran wrap a little bit more than I needed, but I was going to use a bigger one after I'd already cut the uh, saran wrap. I went ahead and <laughs> switched it to a smaller one, So, um, but whatever. It just saves you from cleaning it up. And I, I do apologize for the glare. Let me see if I can maybe move my light. That might help. Okay, I don't want it to be a dark... Uh, dark video for you. So just using uh, glossy accents and you're going to put a little bit in here. So I have two colors that I'm using so I'm going to go ahead and use two of the little pots. And then you just need a dot or two of re-inker. I'm using old olive ink from Stampin' Up. So just a drop or two. Okay. They, it comes together quick but when you're doing it on camera it seems longer than what it is. At least I think it is. I'm conscious of the time. All right. Now, I wouldn't use your best paint brushes, but I did use these two when I made the sample card, and I washed them with, um, I just put dish soap in my hand, and then I did this under the water. Um, did this. What is this? Circles? <laughs> I just kind of rubbed it on my in the dish soap on my hand, and it did come out, so um, I'm not going to say it won't come out, but I won't say to use your best brushes. Uh, it's best to use some that you don't really care about, just in case. And you're going to just mix the glossy accents and the reinker, and then all you do is, now you want to stay in the lines, but you just dot that on here, um, I could have probably gone with another drop because it's not as dark as the sample, but it's still pretty. And then you just want to go around the whole thing. And I am not going to take the time to do that because, uh, like I said, I'm conscious of the time for you guys. Just to kind of give you an idea so you know how to do it if you decide to do this. And you can see I'm already two petals in and it's only been a few seconds. So it will come together very, very fast for you. Okay, you just want to, you're going to end up cutting this out, but um, as much as possible you want to stay in the lines. Okay, I'll just do another petal here, and then I'll switch to the, the green. Okay, make sure I'm on screen. So it looks messy. It's actually fun. Uh, if you like to paint, if that's therapeutic for you or just enjoyable, you would really like making this card. I, I think you would anyway. It's just a fun technique, and like I said, it looks like you've been fussing over your card, and you really haven't, and then it doesn't have dimension, which is a huge bonus, especially now that I've learned stamps are going up again. So here I said another petal or two, but and I'm still playing. I didn't put enough. So just finishing off this one, and then um, it's almost easier to just turn the transparency so you can get the edges. Okay, so that's it for that one. You know what? It's my OCD. I gotta try and do this one. Not that I'm really OCD. I just kind of say that, <laughs> but leaving something unfinished is gonna bother me. So let me just finish this one off for you guys, if you don't mind. It'll be quick. All right, that's it. I'm done. Officially putting it down. See, put it down. Okay. Put this somewhere where it won't roll on your workspace. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the green. Just kind of mix it in. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of the leaves on here. I say that and then you see I'll do the whole thing, right? You're not believing me because you just saw what I did with the flower. <laughs> Had to finish it. Okay, and then this one I'm doing kind of messy. I shouldn't because I'll probably end up using it. Okay, so... That I did glob on a little bit too much. Okay, just moving it over here. All right, so that one you see I did a little bit messy, but you won't be able to tell as bad when it's actually done. So let me get this out of the way. And then what you're going to do, okay, while this is still wet, you're going to get in a scrap piece of paper that you folded in half. I'm just using a piece of copy paper. And you'll want to do that so when you pour the glitter on, you can catch it back in. I'm trying to do this 
one-handed. Okay, so I have my copy paper opened up. You can see the crease down the center, and then I'm using super fine glitter. Um, it's just a really pretty, this is actually Dazzling Diamonds from Stampin' Up, but you see I have a whole bunch of it, and it works out really nice. Um, so then you're going to just add your fine glitter uh, over this, okay? And then make sure you get all the areas, because it'll bother me if I don't. Okay, tap off the excess as much as you can without making a mess. <laughs> so you can see how shimmery that is, and then it'll be even more so once it's dried. So let me clean this glitter up, and then I'll bring this back in, and we'll do one more thing to it. Because I know I'll have this glitter all over, more so than I do already. So then you see how you can just kind of dump it right back in your container and there's no waste and uh, it really helps to have that crease in there. Just another little tip for the newbies or newer stampers out there. Okay, get this out of the way, make more room on my work surface. Okay, so then um, for this particular stamp, it has the center and let me get my sample over here. You see on you know poinsettias, they have like a, a yellowy or gold in there. So all I did, um, I didn't have any gold reinker. Maybe you would and you could do this, but it's such a fine area. I just decided to get my goldenrod stickles and just dot that in the center here. I wanted to do it after I did the, the glitter just because I didn't want to add uh, the stickles over the glitter. Not that it would matter. But, and you don't have to be perfect on here because the black outline, when you flip it over to the front, I forgot to mention too, this is the side that I stamped. You want to do everything on the side with the ink because you're going to set this aside to dry. I set it aside overnight just because the transparency and my climate, it's very humid right now. Uh, we've had a lot of rain. Uh, so I just did that, you know, set it over. You can do a bunch of these and then just set them aside and then come back uh, hours later and then you're going to cut out around the outline of it. And then when you put it on your card, this is what it's going to look like. Real shimmery. So I already have done this. I have one ready to add to our card. So you can see how I've cut this out. This is the side that I glittered. And then this is the front side that we're going to put on our card. So in the way that you attach this to your card is just to use a little bit of the glossy accents. Um, actually, I think I'm going to put the leaves at the bottom because that's the way I did it on the sample. And then you'll just want to get your glossy accents. It won't hurt the glitter. It won't. Um, it won't go through unless you, you know, go over the area that you um, have cut out. But okay, so here, 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 here. You want to get it anywhere that's going to make it stop from flopping. Technical term, right? Okay, so then uh, you can see the glossy accents on there. All I'm going to do is just flip it over. You only get one shot at this, though. I can't promise that you can lift it up and do it again without showing through on your card. So kind of place it and then just leave it alone. Just dot, dab it a little bit. And then again, you'll want to set it aside to dry. And that is a very quick card. A uh, little bit of prep work because you do have to, um, you know, you make a mess a little bit. But if you do a bunch of them and then just set them aside, come back the next day, cutting out takes the longest. But isn't that pretty? It just makes a nice shimmery, uh, nice shimmery card. Okay, so I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this card, and I hope that you'll give it a chance. It is a lot of fun. You can use any line art stamp. It doesn't have to be a Christmas one. You can do this for any occasion. I think flowers uh, of any occasion would be really pretty, especially tulips, I think, because you do have a lot of open space in those. But uh, really, just look through your stamps and see what you have and what color reinkers would go with them. And uh, it's just something that you can make a bunch of. You can uh, bundle them together and give them as a gift or something. Uh, but anyway, that is card number two of the Christmas card ideas uh, for 2013 that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. I will have more Christmas cards. Uh, actually, I have a, at least two more, possibly uh, three more uh, upcoming. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if so, I hope that you'll consider giving it a thumbs up. Thank you so, so much for watching. I truly appreciate it, and I love to hear your comments, so uh, please feel free to leave a comment as well. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.